Hey, it's Ansel again. Today we'll be looking at how I built a $300 keyboard for a client. Um, it's a great budget to start off with. You can start looking at some nicer switches, keycaps, and parts overall. So without further ado, let's get into it. So once you've taken apart all the switches, I like to put them in a switch lube station. Uh, just makes things a little bit easier. I'll put the top housings in a box and I'll put the springs in the bag. And to lube the springs, I just put 5-10 to 10 drops of Crytox in the bag and give it a good shake for maybe a minute or so. Now we move on to lubing the bottom housing. I'm very, very careful here. I only lube the side rails, the back housing, a little bit of the pole, and the bottom housing. I need to be very, very careful not to touch the spring of the bottom housing, as this can cause the switch to lose some of its tactility. And once I've done that, I like to put switch films onto each switch. Durock T1s are just very, very badly stocked, so they desperately need films. Now I like to put the springs into the switch housings one by one. And now I move on to lubing the stems of the switch. I put lube on the side rails, the back of the stem, the front of the stem, and the pole. Now again, I won't be lubing the top housing so I go a bit heavy here, but I am very very careful not to lube the stem legs, as again, this can cause the switch to lose tactility. Then I like to place the stem onto the spring of the switch, and place the top housing just like that. And there we go, we do that 60 more times and we've got a full keyboard full of lubed and filmed switches. Now I like to move on to the stabilizers. Uh, right here I'm just trying to straighten the wires, checking which side is going to rattle and then bending that side accordingly just to make sure that I don't get any more rattle. You don't have to be as neurotic as me but I like to get very very close. Now I like to lube the housing of the stabilizers, going pretty light here with the Crytox. Don't want it to get too over lubed. Now I like to put a little bit of dielectric grease inside of the stem hole. Again, like mentally plugging the butt, but we're doing it early to prevent getting dielectric grease on the stem housing itself. Then I like to do a light coating of Crytox on the outside of the stem housing. From here on, I like to assemble the stabilizers one by one, making sure that they're properly oriented. And then I like to dip the wire in dielectric grease Go a little bit heavy here, it's not that big of a deal, just don't go too, too heavy. This is going to really help reduce the stabilizer rattle and just make things sound really, really nice. Just be careful not to do too much as it might leak onto the inside of the housing rather than the inside of the stem. Now here I'm going to go ahead and place the stabilizers onto the board and just really testing for rattle. I just want to make sure that things sound good from here on out. Once we have all the switches soldered in, it's going to be very, very difficult to mod the stabilizers. You can plug the butt, but again, it's better to do that early, so here is the best time. And here I'm just testing each socket before soldering just to make sure that it works. And then I'll go ahead and place every switch into the plate, making sure that they're properly placed, and then we will move on to soldering. I like to be careful here not to use too much solder and to make sure that each joint looks like a volcano. It just really helps to create a very strong and secure connection without using too much solder. Now I like to test out the PCB, making sure that every switch works, and they all work. So good for us. If you don't know what to use to test your PCB, I personally recommend VIA. It's just super friendly, has a lot of compatibility with a lot of different boards, and just overall really nice to use. Finally, I'm just gonna go ahead and stick some shelf liner in here. It really helps reduce the hollowness and ping of the case when you type, and just makes the whole thing sound a whole lot nicer. And there it is, a $300 keyboard. Very beautiful. Depending on what keycaps and switches you get, the price can fluctuate a little bit, but yeah, that's about it. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope this was really helpful for you. And now, here's a sound test. 